are back. We are back, Bumblebees. Episode 12 of season two. I knew that one. Yeah? It's yeah. We talked about it an hour ago. I was ago. ready for it. <clears throat> Episode 212 is the way we are calling these. Ooh, what a good number. <clears throat> yep. 212. It's not really episode 212, but... No, it's season two, episode 12. Right. Yeah. But we've been numbering everything 212, 211, 210, how, just to make it easy. How crazy to say. <laughs> We're on season two, babe. Yeah. Ugh. Yep. At some point this year, we will hit episode 100. Yeah. Like an actual 100 episode. Yep. You know what we didn't do? What didn't we do? Our intro. I'm Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's how that was supposed to go. Uh, so for those of you who are new to the To Be Better podcast, what we do is we read emails sent in by our viewers, mm-hmm. our fans or followers, whatever you would like to call them. And we have open, honest debates and, and hypothetical situations and try to work through other people's problems to give them guidance in solving their shit. Because they are soliciting our advice right. and our knowledge and our input. We are not therapists. No. We are not um, psychotherapists. We're not shrinks. We're none of that. We have no letters behind our names. We are just two normal people who have lived a lot of life experience and made a lot of mistakes and learned from them. Yeah. We've read a whole lot of self-help books. And we fucked up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to say the least. Oh, yeah. So with that being said, the advice that we give is purely our opinion and it should be taken with a grain of sand. Grain of salt. Grain of I salt. would say a grain of sand. Isn't a grain of sand smaller than a grain of salt? I would assume so. I have a pretty... We have some hefty bitch salt in the, in the kitchen right now. Like, Yeah. One of those is like a size of a sugar cube. That's a big piece of salt. Yeah, compared to a grain of sand. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm one of your hosts. My name is Chris. I am the other host. My name is Peaches. And um, we are going to be your tour guides through this nonsense today. <laughs> <laughs> and follow the flag. <laughs> We're going this way. <laughs> Um, you guys, oh my gosh, what? that's a whole new personality for me now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, we will be reading the emails today. We're going to get into that here shortly because we don't mm-hmm. have a whole lot to go over, but we normally do a little bit of banter before we jump into said emails. Um, if you guys would like to follow us on our other social medias, if you haven't already followed us on TikTok, it is the to be better podcast to be better peaches and to be better life. We have three accounts on TikTok. We are not ever going to DM anyone. Beware of scammers. There's a whole lot of fake accounts trying to get people to do terror readings and taking their money from them. That's not us. Mm-hmm. So if you get those accounts, report them, block them, whatever. If you would like to follow us on Instagram, it is to be better podcast on Instagram. And um, there might be future accounts where we actually do individual accounts to just post life stuff. But I don't know if that'll happen on Instagram or not yet. So Yeah. Yeah. The thought of just posting a random penny that I saw on the ground that looked really cool is kind of... That's doing it for me. If you guys are interested in, in seeing that kind of shit from us, let us know. Yeah. I want to share a moment that happened the other mo- yesterday okay. with the kids. So I was I climbed into their their tree house with them. This is the first time my ankle has been stable enough for me to climb up into that their clubhouse. And they were having like a dinosaur dance party because the dinosaur our son has plays music. And at one point, they were doing like a cops and robbers type scenario. And I'm like... I'm just boarding up this one side, guys. Like, this is my port to take care of. You guys have that side. If the mission fails, it's not because of me. (laughs) And at one point, our son's like against our daughter and our son runs up to me and he's in my face. and He was like, are you on my team? And I'm like, I'm on your team. And I'm like, what are we doing? He's like, we're being bad. And I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) And it's like, it's one of those moments where it's just, it's fun. And I'm gonna start crying. And a lot of moms miss out on those moments because they're working because they're working or they are stay at home mom and they've been taking care of the house for nine hours the whole day. And now they're too tired to go outside and play. And like, I I wanted to record that moment, but like the moment was gone and I'm not going to be like, son, do that again. Right. I'm not doing that. It was just a lot for me. And I wanted to share that. To just remind parents, like, stop doing what you're doing. You have five minutes. I wasn't expecting to cry. Now I'm focusing on crying and I lost all of that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not a podcast. Do you cry? And we only made it 15 minutes. So it's definitely a podcast. Yeah. I, I think it's crazy to me that all this started. Like, you, you know, the thing that I hate the most about all of this what? real shit. The thing that I hate most about the podcast is that you're not a stay at home mom anymore. I agree. <laughs> right. Like you yeah. were, you were the traditional wife. That's how all of this started. And now you're an entrepreneur and you're running business shit that has nothing to do with the podcast or me. Mm-hmm. 
Right. And though those, yes, those are things that you chose to take on because you have the idea of doing these things and it's things that interest you, but the traditional housewife is not a thing. And we've had to modify our original agreement in our life to make it so that we can do these things and still try to be as traditional as possible with what we have. But out of everything that we've done with all of the businesses and the podcast and the apparel and, and bath lines and apothecary and journals, and that's the thing that I hate the most about all of this. Right. And yes, we have made it work and we still make it a point to only work when the kids aren't here. Right. You know what I mean? Sometimes we do have to record at night after the kids have gone to bed, which we try not to do because they wake up. Um, So we're doing work while they're in daycare or at school. And when dad has them and we're trying to make all of that work, but like it's affected our downtime. Yeah. But it's it's cool because we're still able to do shit that we would have like most parents can't. Right. Like buy four wheelers for a three and a four or a four and a five year old, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I don't know. I regret or I, not regret. I miss our time and what we had before the podcast started, but I'm very grateful for the a life that the podcast has afforded. And I know that as time goes on and the kids get older, it's going to give them a lot more than they would have had otherwise, which is super dope. Right. And it's made us better parents because we understand things differently than we did before. But, um, I miss it too. We used to have conversations about being a traditional wife and a traditional husband. And I I think maybe we need to try to find a way to bring that back into our podcast a little bit because there are a lot of people who want that life and the tips and the skills that we were giving in the beginning of the podcast hit on that shit quite a bit. I also think you telling people to take that five minutes with your kids and to play and do that is um, something a lot of people need to hear. Okay, so I want to read something. I'm not going to say who this is with, but I'm having a conversation with a friend in my life right now. And her and I, I, I'm not going to say that I'm depressed anymore. I don't want to refer to my bouts of low energy as depression. Okay. Because when you give something a name, it has power. And I don't want to view that as depression anymore. I want to view it as like, I'm low energy. This is like a time for rest. Everything in life is moving in emotion. So why wouldn't my feelings be that way too? So I'm not going to like, life is fucking terrible. I'm a piece of shit. It's time to quiet down a little bit. Maybe be more reserved. Do some self-reflection. Those kinds of things. Recharge. Right. It's going to be more of a spiritual thing and less of an emotional thing. Does that make sense? Mm Mm-hmm. You're making a choice not to be depressed. Right. So my friend is also going through this. And she said, she asked me, how do you manage moving out of the funk? And I texted back, I shower, I brush my teeth, I put my phone down and I go outside with the kids and I cuddle and I read with them at bedtime. And I said, I snuggle on my husband and be extra with my needs. I cook. I try to focus on the things that I enjoy doing. A lot of the time it lasts 30 minutes and then back to being lazy, but the recharge is nice. It reminds me that when I'm feeling good, all of this makes me happy. So not doing so is selfish to me because it's in favor of my demons. And it's easy to just be numb and not clean when you've walked past the sink with dirty dishes three times today, because when you clean them, you'll have to clean them again tomorrow. I remind myself why the dishes are getting used in the first place. And it's because I'm able to cook for my husband and children and they go to bed full and safe. Oh, fuck. And that I'm at leisure to do really anything in my life because I'm not worried about being in an unsafe area or the cartel coming to take my children or the things going on in the Middle East right now. I get sad because there's nothing new and exciting. So all day I sit in my brain and I've decided that I'll create the excitement by watching my kids run as the sun sets. And my husband holds me at night with love instead of falling asleep on the couch every night for the last six months. And she was like, holy shit, that just put a lot in perspective for me. Like, that helped a lot. So if anybody else needs to hear that. You are going through it today. I'm really emotional today. There's a lot going on for me. <laughs> um, this last month has really been rough. Like, the first month of 2024. It's been rough. So... I feel like there's a lot coming to conclusion within me right now and I'm I agree. I'm coming out of the processing of a lot of things. Come here, woman. It's so slow. I know it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Just... 
Wow. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Yeah, I don't know how much of that I'm going to leave in there. Okay. Some things people don't need to see. Some of it, some some things are just for us. Okay. Let's get into some emails. We're 30 minutes in, 20, 22 minutes in. Okay. It'll be less than that, but. So this one's titled, Thank You. Hi, guys. I just wanted to reach out and say a huge thank you for everything y'all talk about on your podcast. I'm so thankful for how you both have helped my relationship. I've always been a very independent woman, and I've struggled with letting my man take the reins and be the provider and protector. Hearing the pride and joy that Chris has for protecting Peaches and being her piece is beautiful and has helped me see my man wants to be that so much. Peaches has helped me grow into a more submissive type woman with more traditional values because she has so much pride in doing these things for Chris. And when I started being that person as well, nothing has made me feel more fulfilled than doing something as small as serving my man dinner. How crazy is that? That's insane. Because society wants to tell you that that is not acceptable. Right. That you're not his mother. Right. And you're mothering him by serving him his plate. Right. And she's like, this makes me feel more fulfilled than ever before. Do you remember the first time we made that video on TikTok? About the plate serving. Yeah. Do you remember how much fucking hate I got? From, yeah. Even even from men. I don't need my woman to serve me a plate. I'm a fucking adult. Like, yeah. it just blows my fucking mind how fast people are to like shut that shit down instead of being receptive to the fact that that could you know change somebody's right. view of things. Why? Are you, like, why are you so angry? Right. That would be my first question. Why are you so mad about it? Like, you're. I'm not asking you to do it. Where is the offense at? People don't, everything is surface level. People don't ask themselves why anymore. Instead of making a really shitty comment, ask yourself, why do I want to react so adversely to this? Yeah. Why am I having such a visceral reaction, you know, to call me a dumb bitch or a slave because I'm a happily married woman? That's a very visceral reaction to something that is just happiness and love and joy. Yeah. You still get called a pick me quite a bit. Oh, yeah, I do. That makes me laugh so much. Yeah, you got called that this morning on the taking the boots off video that we posted. Really? Yeah. Somebody's like, she sure sounds like a pick me. I'm like, well, she was picked and she's married and her life is dope as fuck. So I'm assuming she won that one. Yeah. Blows it takes everything mind. I have not to belittle those people. If they, like, especially if I can see their videos. Right. Cause then I, then I got some information on them. Like, right. Let's go, bitch. You want to play that game? Let's we'll start throwing stones, yeah. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> We're not supposed to do that though. No. Nope. That's another thing. All, almost all of the petty has left my body. Not me. Because we are public figures. I know. We're not supposed to do that shit. And it's, it's bad for us. A lot of people dislike when we punch downward is what it's called. Because we have a following and they don't. As if us having a following somehow makes us not human anymore. And the right to defend ourselves is gone right. because we have a following. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. I would. I, I really want to be petty and, and do that shit. Yeah. But I have Zach. And He's Zach, Zach says no. And when Zach says, yeah. hey, don't do that, I say, you right, bro. Because yeah. you are a much more logical human being than I am. My, re- my response to a fight is to fight, yeah. not to run. Yeah. Or ignore. Yeah, so. someone throws a punch at me where yeah. it's a hoedown at that point. <laughs> Get it? It's a hoedown. <laughs> yeah. Jen is my voice of reason. Yeah. When I think of something, I'm like, how would Jen respond to this? <laughs> I just ask Zach. Is I don't, she panicking I don't in the chat right now? <laughs> <laughs> Back into the email. He is the absolute light of my life, and I'm so proud to be his. Chris has helped me get over myself and realize I'm taking away from my man when I wasn't accepting his protection and everything he wanted to provide me with. Hearing the way Chris explains how he feels when he is platypus. So many peas. Hearing the way Chris explains how he feels when he is when he is protecting or providing for his wife made me actually feel bad for my man because I was too stubborn to let him do those things for me. It is a very, very, very rare phenomena for a woman to take a step back and not only admit that her actions may have been wrong in the situation, but to also say I was the one causing the pain to my man. Good for you. A lot of women want their men's emotions until it comes to something that they did that caused a negative emotion. Of course, because then they're the problem. Right. It's never me. I'm perfect. Yeah. 
I think it's important to remember in that too that men don't want super masculine women. No, they don't. Right. They, if it, they wanted to have Bob the Builder, they would be with Bob the Builder. Yep. Not saying you can't be a woman who's crafty. You can be a construction woman while still having feminine traits about That's you it. and not being combative and challenging with your man. And yep, you're going to call me daddy. No. That's not how this is going to work. There are beta males out there who are about that life. Yeah, I mean, if that's what you're about, then don't. Traditional men are not, though. Right. I would say most traditional men. Vast majority of men are not. Yeah. Broad categorization there, so no one's feelings are hurt. People's feelings will still be hurt. No, they'll be okay. Here, kiss the (laughs) Band-Aid. Since I've switched my mindset and started taking more of the submissive and traditional roles, we have never been happier, and I can't thank you two enough for the wise words you have shared. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I'm sure you get plenty of emails telling you this, but I felt it would be a disservice if I didn't share my feelings. Keep doing what you're doing, because as long as I'm around, you'll have at least one fan. I love that. Thank you for the support. Yeah. The shit means a lot. It really does. I love thank you emails. Yep, the shit means a lot. Would you keep doing this for just one fan? Um, I I don't know. I I gotta be honest. There's a part of me that doesn't want to do this now. Elaborate. This is a lot. It is a lot. It's draining, right? And it's not. It's not a two-hour episode. No. It's a 15-hour process for a two-hour episode. The podcast is now our life. Right, and it's full-time, and it's it's live streams and trying to find guests and trying to find sponsors and dealing with, with you know iHeartRadio and, and all of the things that we have to do behind the scenes that no one else sees. It's right. time-consuming as fuck. And networking and building relationships. Right. And- there is a reward in all of this, knowing that we are helping people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes me want to keep doing it. I also think that this is what we're being called to do by God. So like, if I have to be tired, I mean, I'm not being beaten. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if this is my my servitude to God, because this is what needs to be happening, and that's truly what I believe, Mm -hmm. it could be so much fucking worse. Yeah. I can keep reinforcing my mental walls. Right. So I I don't know. It's difficult. There are times where I just don't want to do this shit. No, I get it. it. And it's not like a fuck them. It's just... I don't know if I'm built for this. Right. Like today, it would be nice to just not work today. Yeah. And it's not an option. There, It's not. It's seven days a week. Mm-hmm. And and even on days where we have the kids and we go do shit, we're working before and after. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. And, I, and I'm not complaining about the workload. The workload doesn't bother me. It's the mental toll, the emotional toll that it takes on me because of what we're doing. Yeah. I view this as you verbally processing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want them to think that I hate what we do. I love this shit. Right. We're verbally processing right now. Right. But to 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 be um, dishonest and say that it's not taxing taxing would be bullshit. It is taxing, and like mm-hmm. we'll read emails, and I'll get upset while we're reading the emails, or I'll get passionate or even angry, and then I have to watch the episode all over again to edit it, and then get I have, angry again, and then I, yeah, and I have to live that all over again, and then I have to go live on the premiere and watch it again, and watch it and have conversation who's now with people who are now also getting angry by it. Right. So I have three times the amount of fuck this going on. I, I don't know. It's it's I, I, I would probably do this even if we didn't have anyone. As long as the emails were coming in, I would probably continue to do this. I agree. Because there's people who need it. Right. So. And, it, and like past all of the surface level, oh my God, I can't believe you would say that. Or I can't believe you would have that person on your podcast. I'm so offended right now. <laughs> like we are saving people's marriages. Yeah. We. Parent, quotations we we are not the right. information we are giving it is it is you guys implementing the information and actually using the tools that is saving your marriages and you guys are choosing to save your own lives and knowing that we are kind of like the forefront of that right that's dope knowing that we can give the thoughts and the opinions and the different perspectives and like hey have you thought about this and it's actually changing minds for the better yeah. Yeah. I, I would I would like to touch on that whole I can't believe you have those people on your podcast. Yeah. Um I believe in free speech. 
I do too. Even if I disagree with it. Right. I, you have the right to say what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And I will have people on the podcast that I don't like and disagree with as long as they're respectful. Right. Me we can, too. We can do that. Right. But if people want to unfollow us because we have a conversation with someone, please don't let the door hit you on the way out. I will gladly hold that door as you exit and tell you to have a great day. Yeah. We don't need you here. Yeah, I, I will like in that specific situation, I will 100% be that. Let me go grab the manager and then come back out and be like, how can I help you? Right. Get fucked. I like, mean that full chest. Right. If we have somebody on the podcast and they are not doing egregious acts, right? Like they're not out there committing grape and they're not doing financial fraud and they're not actively deceiving people, right? If somebody says something out of the side of their neck and they're like, oh, damn, I shouldn't have said that. Right. You shouldn't have said that. Moving on. Yep. Not going to say it again. Dope. We learned a lesson. That's it. Yeah. I think a grapist would be where I drew the line of people that I would talk to. I agree. I would talk to murderers, blue, white yeah. collar criminals, people who are still actively frauding people. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about any of that. They're not doing it to me. I'm smart enough to not be frauded. And we're not doing the acts. Right. Right. We're having a conversation with them. You know, there are people out there who have interviewed pedophiles. And those people, like the people who are deranged and mentally ill, have given so much insight into how those people think. They have given parents new tools on how to defend their children. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to sit through an interview like that, though. I know. I, I don't think I would be able to either. Like the people who can, thank you for doing it. Because now as a mom, I am more equipped to know what to look for. Yeah. It's hard to sit through those interviews and listen to those people talk. If you are blind to what's happening, it can 100% come into your home. All right, let's see if I can find these emails. All right, this one is titled, A Jack of All Trades, A Master of None. I'm not really sure how to put this feeling or this string of thoughts into a coherent sentence, but I'm going to do my best. My wife, female 26, and I, male 29, don't share a whole lot in terms of interest towards hobbies. Me, I've always been an active person, perhaps it's my ADHD, but I've got so many hobbies and things that I enjoy doing, and my wife has none. How, how does that happen? A lot. How, how do you build a foundation with somebody that you have nothing in common with? Right. Like, what were you guys doing together? Fucking. We was fucking. That, yeah, that's really the only thing I can think of, because outside of that, like, are you guys not watching movies together? Were you only hanging out for like two or three hours and like you would get a movie in and then half talk about in, your day? Netflix and chill and then leave? Right. Hey, this is really fun. You're great in bed. Let's get married. Yeah. How, how do you how do you create a, a relationship and have nothing in common with the person that you were getting into a relationship with? Mm -hmm. That does not work for my mindset. Well, Opposites attract. No, they right. don't. It, it could work for them because. I don't know. Their love languages just work out that way. They don't need quality time together with shared hobbies. They could just coexist in a room or something. There's really weird relationships out there that people make work. I don't know. I guess. I, I want my best friend to have the the same qualities that I have in me so mm -hmm. that we can mesh on, on things and have conversations. And I want them to have hobbies that I have. Right? So right. all of my friends, not just you, but all of my friends, we have integrity and trust and honor between us. And we have similar hobbies and mm -hmm. similar joking styles. And it's why we have the relationships that we have. Right. You being my wife and my best friend, if we didn't get along and didn't share hobbies and the only time we were intimate is during sex, that's not a relationship. It's a fuck buddy. Yeah, that is a fuck buddy or a drug addict. Why a drug addict? Because a lot of times when people get sober, all they had in common with the people they had around them was that they did drugs together. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. It could be a thing. We've actually gotten emails like that. Yeah. There's got to be some sort of a foundation there. Right. She enjoys watching reality TV and cleaning. Her words, not mine. And I don't see a whole lot wrong with it. But problems really start to arise when she decides to show interest in my hobbies. For example, we have been going to separate gyms. The gym I go to is a very motivated traditional gym full of old school equipment, whereas her gym is Planet Fitness. Okay, so you are somebody who your whole life you've been working out. What does old school equipment mean? Is that like more of like a bodybuilder gym? Um, it could be. It could be a powerlifting facility or a strongman gym. There's There are different types of gyms out there. There are gyms mm -hmm. out there where you can't grunt while lifting weights, a.k.a. Planet Fitness. 
And there are gyms out there where if you've got more weight on the bar and you're getting ready to do a PR that you've never hit. Everyone's watching. Everyone will stop what the fuck they're doing and scream and yell. Right. Mm -hmm. So your environment in the gym matters. Right. It fucking matters. If you have pretty boys in there just trying to gym Flex. tan life or whatever yeah. the fuck that was called. That's not the same thing as somebody that's going in there to fucking put crippling weight on their back and squat it to the floor and stand up again. It's two very different mindsets. Yeah. You have people that go because they want to be pretty boys. And you have people that go because they have demons that they got to fucking battle every day. And those are two very different men. I don't think that a woman doesn't belong in either of those gyms. I have seen women go to the gym who are in wheelchairs and go to gyms like that and lift. Yeah. So I'm already from just that. She's okay. trying to connect to him and he's got a problem with it. Okay. I have no idea where this is going, but that was the immediate feeling that I got from that. Okay, if that we was were, the vibe. If we were going to different gyms and you were like, babe, I want to come to the gym with you today. And I'm like, it's back day. And you're like, I don't care. I'm like, okay. And you go and you go and you work and you do all the same exercises and you're fucking, even if it's a quarter of the weight, I'm tenth of the weight I'm lifting and you still try, let's run that shit. But if you're going to go there and play on your phone and post selfies and stick your ass out and run around and talk to everybody and disrupt people, I'm not going to want you there. Right. Because I'm not there for that. Well, that's a joke. Right. Yeah. You're, you're there because you're trying to look at me. Right. I would be embarrassed by that behavior. It, it, you see it in every single gym in, in America. There are people who go there just for that. So if you had to get all completely dolled up to go to the gym and I'm going to fucking sweat and scream and curse and throw and break. We're, we're not we're not working out together. Yeah. I don't need that. I want I want to not be able to move the next day. Right. That that soreness. Yeah. That's the goal. Yep. So when she decided to come with me to my gym today, she got very frustrated at the equipment because it's different from her gym. And what, I, wait, wait, and what did you do about that? Okay. What, 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 okay. Well, he goes on. All right. Okay. I'm already annoyed by this. Okay. And while I understand a slight frustration... I felt that she expected me to stop what I was doing and to teach her the ropes of my gym. She did expect that. She's your fucking wife, bro. I'm going to be honest. I would expect that. Like. Why? You did do that when we. <clears throat> so when we were dating, we started going to the same gym together and I've never been in this gym before. I've never lifted the way you've lifted before. I always did like cardio and like light girl shit that I never took photos in the gym, but. I was very intimidated by lifting weight because I didn't know how to not hurt myself. There was probably two or three months, four or five days a week where you are going slower in your routine to teach me what to do to make sure long term that we can do this together. Right. I have said over and over again that the biggest people in the gym are the ones who want to be the most helpful. Right. Right. If you get a if so I owned a gym like 15 years ago, I owned a gym. And we would get high school kids that would come into the gym and there would be people in there who are deadlifting six, 700 pounds, mm -hmm. right? Like big number deadlifts and squats who would stop what they were doing to show the young people in the gym how to lift. I love that. Because that's the camaraderie of the gym. And that's mm -hmm. that old school gym mentality. If that's you see community. somebody, huh? That's community. Right. If you see somebody doing something that's going to hurt themselves, you stop and help them. Mm -hmm. If a young man came up and was like, hey, can you show me how to deadlift? Yeah, bro. I, I don't care if it takes me two fucking hours. Right. You're going to deadlift by the time we're done. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need a spot. And then you spot them and they do something wrong and you correct their technique. Right. That's normal gym bro shit mm -hmm. to think that your wife is going to come to the gym and you're not going to honor that same mindset with your fucking wife. It's a problem. This is a passionate conversation for me because the gym has been so prevalent and because I have been in a powerlifting and strong man my entire life. Like. And your wife I'm is above a, a gym bro. I'm fucking annoyed right now. I know. Yep. I, I don't get it. I fucking don't get it. Could you imagine what would have happened if she would have been in the gym and one of the other gym bros would have seen her struggling and walked over and tried to help how fucking mad he would have got? How dare you accept help from him? You could have came and asked me. Right. They could have created a whole lot of hypothetical right. problems and all that. But I guarantee you he would have felt a certain way about it. Yeah. The amount of request okay. for connection in all of that is huge. The selfishness in it. Right. We don't see that anymore. Now it's watch this dumbass. He's about to hurt himself. Right. There's no. Hey, bro, let me help you out. Uh, it's everyone's like superiority complex. It's about me. I shouldn't have to stop what I'm doing to go and help them. They should research it. 
we apologize about the cell phone. She's got a doctor's call in 25 minutes that we can't miss. I do. I am. Um, the request for connection that's here is she's trying to connect with a level on him mm -hmm. to be able to like experience life with him, to be able to go to the gym together and like, okay, I, I'm annoyed. I know. So I'm trying to like push that back. Mm -hmm. I keep a gym log. You do. Have. Currently I'm not because I'm just getting back into lifting after ripping my pec off the bone. Um, and I've been doing the same routine for a year because that's what I can do without hurting myself. But I have 15 or 20 five-star mead notebooks that are full of my workouts from, from the last 15 years. If I'm doing the same weight every single week, the same amount of reps, and I'm not making progress and I'm not getting stronger, something's wrong with my routine. Something has to change. Mm -hmm. That log is a way for me to, to track that. It's data. Right. If you and I are in the gym together and the most I bench is 315 and you're like, babe, you did that last week. You only got eight reps. What's going on? I'd be like, you're right. We're going to do another set. And if I get five reps on the next set, that's five reps and an extra set that I didn't do last week. Mm -hmm. There's an accountability in that. And there is nothing like having your woman go, hey, you got more in you. What are you doing? To be like, oh, you're right. Damn. You can call me out like that. Like, mm -hmm. but it's the same thing. If I see you half repping or playing on your phone and you're not in it, I'm going to say something like, why are you here right now? Mm -hmm. Right? We've had those conversations, but we are bonding in those moments and we are holding each other accountable and we are holding each other up. We are making it so that like all things in life, our success depends on you and I making sure that we are on the same page and we are not accepting less than from each other. Mm -hmm. 10 reps is what I did. And you're like, that was fucking easy. Why did you stop? Right. Fuck, you right, laying right back down. Mm -hmm. If I can get six more, then you could be like, you sandbagging motherfucker, because we've had those conversations too. I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why you would not take the, the month of extended workout time to make sure that your woman knows how to properly lift, especially if you go to an old school gym and that's important to you. Why wouldn't you want to cultivate that? I don't want to get too big mentality right. because that's what you're doing by telling her to go back to Planet Fitness. If a woman doesn't think that she can lift weights and not look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, because most women think they pick up a five pound dumbbell. Like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> I can pick up a 150 pound dumbbell and it doesn't do that. And you right. have one tenth of the, the natural testosterone as a man. There are men who take tons and tons of drugs and still can't look like Arnold. You guys will never look like that. Right. Even if you have really crazy gifted genetics, unless you're on drugs, you will not look like that. Mm -hmm. So We're why not, not built to look like that? Right. Why not cultivate that? And be like, you can still get not skinny fat. You can lose a whole bunch of weight and get somewhat toned and muscular and have like thick gym booty and thick thighs. And if you want to look like that, I'll, I'll totally help that thing. And if you just want to go do cardio while and, and walk on the stair stepper for an hour while I fucking deadlift, then do that. But we're doing it together. I can look over on the stair stepper and watch you struggle. And you can watch me hit a PR. And we can give each other a head nod in the moment to like, I fucking see you over there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand that. I, I, I This bothers me. Yep, it bothers me. You want to keep I, going? Yeah, I do. I'm annoyed, though. I know. Sorry, guys. Yep. Do you think it's because it's a thing for us? Yeah, I do. Because, and because yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Because well, I would never do that to you. Right. I, I just want to give an elaboration as to why you're so annoyed. Yeah. Um, Because I've owned a gym. Because I've watched people come in, get discouraged, and leave and never go back to the gym. Because I know that in my darkest depressions on days where I've wanted to fucking kill myself, squatting 500 pounds makes that go away. Because I know the correlation between my physical health and my mental health. Mm -hmm. And I know how fucking the gym can be your church. It can be your sanctuary. It can be the place that you go to let everything out so that you don't let it out in a time that it's not warranted. Right? There, There is a love in that for me. So having that love does make me passionate about it. I think everyone should be able to experience that type of community. Mm -hmm. Where else are you going to find it? You're not going to find it at church because people want to gossip about each other. Right. You're not going to find it in, in any school system anywhere because of the fucking clicky drama nonsense. There's nowhere else on the planet that you can find a camaraderie other than the military that you can find in a good gym. Mm -hmm. This is all there is to that. I'm done now. Okay. I've never experienced that. No? No. It's 
because we only trained at that gym for a short amount of time. And it was a commercial gym. It wasn't like that. Yeah. I don't know. CrossFit gyms are notorious for that. They give you, they give you a community like none other. It's why people say it's a cult. Oh, people say we're a cult. Oh yeah. I don't care. So I get it. CrossFit (laughs) back into the email. I felt like she expected me to stop doing what I was doing and to teach her the ropes of my gym. I tried explaining that they were all the same, do the same things. She complained the entire time. And me, I told her to just adapt to it. It's not a big deal. She then threw a fit and got on a treadmill and walked for the remainder of the time. And it got me really thinking. She always does this. And me, I know I don't have the patience to teach her. It's because you don't want to. How did y'all get married? All I hear in that is she just wanted your attention, dude. Right, and he was just an absolute dick about it. All the machines are not the same. If they were all the same, right? what's the point of having the gym? You can only do, what, three separate workouts on one machine? You can target these three specific body parts, and that's all you can do here, guys. Yeah. Even if they had all the exact same equipment that Planet Fitness had, and it was verbatim Mm -hmm. or um, piece by piece the exact same thing and she's complaining about it, it's because she wants you to be there. She's asking you to be a part of what's happening. Right. Why not go come work out with me instead of doing your normal routine? That's the answer. Mm -hmm. Come on, babe, we'll work out together. Don't worry about those machines. You don't need them. We're going to free weight today. Hold her fucking wrist while she's doing chest presses, right? Teach her how to deadlift and squat. Bump dumbbell rows, like something. Do something other than go, I don't have time for this. Go walk the treadmill. Mm -hmm. Get frustrated. Brr. And if this is something that she always does, you are not, you're, you're part of this problem, bud. Yeah. Cause she's, cause you're, you're denying the request for connection. You're denying it. And from the way that you said that, it, you're kind of coming across as a dick. I think we need to create a new disclaimer. Okay. I, I think that we need to tell people at the beginning of our podcast that if you send an email in, the chances of us picking apart your partner is going to be very slim. Yeah. We're picking you apart. It seems to be the case yeah. because we don't have their side of things yeah. and, and we can only point out what's going wrong. And if From you're your point of view, right. And if you're the problem, we're going to fucking tell you and you're not going to like it. Yeah. Or maybe this is what they want. Maybe this is why he emailed in because he doesn't understand that she's actually requesting for connection and he's trying to figure out why this is a problem. Yeah. I don't know. Another example was a few weeks ago. We went to the ski valley and me, her, and her brothers went snowboarding. She sat in the lodge and proceeded to watch us all day. At the end of the day, she told me that she would like to try and that it looks fun. Me being excited, I told her that we should. So I offered to put her in a half-day class where she can learn the fundamentals, and when the class is up, we'll do some runs together. Wow. She quickly shut that idea down. I asked why, and she said that she would be embarrassed and that she refuses to go to a class. I told her that there's nothing wrong with classes and that, and that's how I learned. Just suck it up. Wow. I'm not taking her on the mount on the side of a mountain and teaching her in an uncontrolled environment. And being someone who just picks things up naturally doesn't really know how to explain or teach someone other than you just do it. And that as an instructor, you know, comma, someone's whose whole job is to break it down comma explain and teach okay this is not what that's about no it's not and they have kitty slopes they do you could have been at the bottom of the slope teaching her just how to fucking stand up on the board yep or at the top of it and be like hey you're gonna fall be yeah. prepared for that but you're gonna get back up and we're gonna do this there are parents who take their three and four year olds like starfish stance because they can't move on their snowboards. And they're like, all right, kid, go. And they snowboard slowly next to the child and pick up the kid. And right. I, I'm not a good, good at teacher at a lot of things, mm-hmm. right? I can, I can teach people gym shit because I actually went to school for that. But the, um, the dirt bike riding, mm-hmm. there was a whole lot of you falling. Yeah, there was. Because I'm not a good teacher at that. I'm, yeah. I'm just do it. I don't know. It's like riding downstairs. And you're like, I've never ridden downstairs. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> How are you an adult that's been on a bicycle and never ridden downstairs? Because that's normal shit to me. Right. But you're wasn't. still riding your dirt bike. I am, yeah. I'm healing right now, though. But I'm so excited to get back on the bike and get out there and do shit. Right. And if I just left you and went and rode the track and did the thing and you were like, 
I really want to do this. And I'm like, okay, go do that. Find somebody to teach you. And I got in the van and just waited. How fun is that? Just tells me you don't care. Right. Like it's more about you doing your thing. And if I get to tag along dope, but you're completely content if I'm not. Yeah. Yep. That's what hurts. Hurts a lot more than falling. It does hurt a lot more than falling. Yeah. It, it's not hard. And, and, and it doesn't mean that you can't snowboard. You spent the entire day snowboarding with her brother, having a great time. And at the end of the day, she was like, that looks fun. I'd like to try it. Okay, babe, tomorrow morning, we're going to spend an hour trying to get you to snowboard. Yep. And then if you spend that hour and she can't get the grasp of it, then maybe suggest the class right. and be like, Hey, do you mind if I take the rest of the you know next five hours to go snowboarding with your brothers? We're going to hit the lift and go down the hill a couple times and then I'll come back up and we can try again. Right. You can practice on the kitty slopes while I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. There's still a trade off that can happen. Right. But you just shutting that shit down and not not meeting the request for connection. Mm -hmm. I, uh, dude, I would I would never ask you for anything. In this scenario, if I was her, I would never be like, hey, ever again. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. Oh, what was I going to think of? I was thinking of something. It was just formulating. The, the cauldron was just starting to bubble like it was at a boil. And then you said something and then it just stopped. The fire went out. What was, oh, it was such a good thing. You said that they could snowboard together, take an hour. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I got it. <laughs> so... That, that's a two-sided thing, right? Every equation has more than just one variable. So if his trade-off is, hey, we'll wake up at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, get breakfast early, maybe be up by 7, eat, be on the slope by 8 o'clock, we'll work for an hour or two, and if you're able to get the hang of it, we'll get up to the slopes. That time goes by, and he goes, okay, you're really not grasping it. Clearly, I'm not able to teach you. I still really, really want to do this with you. I think you should go take an instruction class because... They teach, I'm not doing this right. Whatever the fucking thing needs to be. And then her end of that needs to be, all right, I'm a big, I'm a big girl pants this shit. If I really want to have this quality time with my man, I'm going to go be uncomfortable in this class and learn how to do this. Be uncomfortable for an hour to spend the rest of your life snowboarding with your man. It is embarrassing as fuck to fall off of a dirt bike multiple times in a standstill position. Humiliating. You know what's so much fun though? going 40 miles an hour down a dirt road with you looking back at me and we're having fun and we see deer and we find random water plants and we're like, how can we get into this fence? And we can't cause it's illegal. And then we like, are we going to do something illegal? No, not today. All right. And then we're going to go back down the dirt road. There's so much adventure. <laughs> I am willing to put myself in very, for me and like my self being, I, I, I never really did any adventurous things. Like we took cruises very cushiony, but we have never been zip lining until you took me zip lining. Am I talking too much? No, okay. my, my phone just went off. So climbing to the top of a lighthouse is terrifying for me. I didn't know it was until I did it. And then I had the option of either going back down the lighthouse or continuing upwards. And you were already like four stories above me and you were like, you were shouting, come on, babe, you can do this. You got this shit. Right. I could have been like, you need to come down here and get me. And I would have. You and I would have still dragged your ass to the top of the fucking right. lighthouse. Or, and that was one of those moments where like, I have to man up a bit. And I did. And I got to the top of that lighthouse sobbing. <laughs> and we're walking around the top and I have my body pressed against the lighthouse. And I have my husband holding my hand. I'm like, don't go any faster than me. <laughs> and we'll inch a little bit and I'll stop and I'll look around. And be like, oh, this is so nice through my tears. And we continue moving. And it was a really magical moment for me, even though my body was absolutely terrified, reacting in a way that I didn't want to react in that moment. But I bet I could get to that top of the lighthouse again. Right. Because you've done it. Right. And, and there was a, a togetherness. Yeah. Right. We did something together. It allowed me to be there for you. It allowed me to experience something with you that you were absolutely terrified to do. Yeah. All, all of that comes down to us living our life together. If mm -hmm. you get married to somebody or you're dating with the intent, intent of married marriage, right. the whole goal is to fucking live your life and experience shit with that person. Not separate. Another dope thing happened at the top of that lighthouse. You pulled me away from the lighthouse into you and we have a picture together of me just smiling and crying like all of my trust was in i'm gonna start crying again fuck i'm so emotional today you are pretty emotional today oh 
I think I'm going through like a spiritual awakening right now and it's just all of it's flooding out. Like in that moment, it gave you the opportunity to show you, babe, I got you. Like I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. And in that moment, it allowed me to trust you. Like he's not going to prank me and pretend to push me over the side of this lighthouse or like grab me and try to scare me. It was, it was dope. And you got to go to the edge of the lighthouse. I did. Yeah. And you were like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. I looked over and I was like, oh, wow, look at all of that. Just like this. And I was like, okay, I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) Back into the email. These frustrations of hers even carry over into everyday life. Sometimes I love to cook. I do all of the cooking in the house. But as someone who works 50 plus hours a week, sometimes I don't want to. And I would love to come home to a hot meal that's not ramen or mac and cheese. But again, she refuses to even follow a recipe online or watch a YouTube video on learning. So I'm left with the option of sucking it up, whipping a meal together at 9 p.m. or ordering out. That's a problem. That is a problem. I agree. That's the first one where I'm like, okay, she she is kind of dropping the ball here. I'm going to say something really controversial. Oh, let's see if I agree or disagree. I wouldn't be with a woman who can't cook. I agree. But I also wouldn't be with a man who can't cook. Right? If I'm out of commission for like a month because I had sepsis and surgery and all these kinds of things, and we are in a point financially that we can't order out, babe, I'm going to need you to be able to cook some beef or something. I can't survive off of mac and cheese. Right. The idea of working all day long till eight or nine o'clock coming home exhausted and having to cook dinner. Like I'm not about that. Right. I'm not. And I don't know if she's got a job or if you know how that looks, but working from sun up till sundown in the sun coming home exhausted. I ain't cooking shit. I got to be honest. I, I, that's a requirement. Yeah. One of those like hard. Yep. But if I have to live this life on my own, I'm gonna live this life on my own. Yeah. I want a teammate. That's where, like, if you feel like you're not the hottest person in the room, but you can fucking cook, I can promise you, you will have more suitors than the most attractive person. Yeah, you'll you'll get a good man if you can cook. Oh, yeah. Especially if you can cook well. You get you a blue-collar good old boy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Way way to our our hardest through our stomach. Back into the email? Mm -hmm. No, 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 not back into the email. I I really think that that's an understated situation. Yeah, that's the problem. If she is even, okay, hypothetical, she's working part-time. 29 hours a week. That's hardly three days, right? If you are clocking in by nine o'clock, clocking out by 2 p.m. and that's three days a week, you have time to get home, decompress, meal prep, take a bath and have dinner ready by the time your man gets home. Even if she's working a nine to five, yeah. if he's working from sun up to sundown and is not getting home until like he said, nine o'clock at night, and then has to stand in the kitchen and cook. That's a problem for me. Yeah. If she's home, that dinner should be ready. Right. I don't give a fuck how how misogynistic you guys want to call that. Like, oh boy, is killing himself. The least the woman can do is make his fucking dinner. Right. And if she wasn't with him, would she just be living off of ramen macaroni and, mac and cheese and, and ramen? Cheese? Probably. Probably, because there are oh. people who live like that. I can't. I have to jazz our meals up. Like, when it comes down to necessity, I could. Right. If it's based on survival, like we have money for mortgage car payments and then we have two hundred dollars for ramen and whatever fixings like I'm fine with that. But if we have the funds to go out and buy steak and potatoes, I'm going to cook steak and potatoes. Right. Even even when we work out in the morning and we come in, you make my shake. I do. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that. I can I can go shower real quick and then come in and start working Mm -hmm. and drink my shake as soon as I'm out of the shower. And like. On days that we don't work out, if you decide to cook breakfast, I don't have to worry about that. I don't yeah. worry about food. I That is not... Feeding myself is not a concern. I love that you can say that. There's a whole lot of people out there like, what kind of fucking man is that? Right? Because we hear that shit. My fucking man. Right. But I don't have to worry about that. I have right. to worry about the things that truly matter. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about my laundry. I don't have to worry about my, my food. I don't even have to worry about being like, babe, I'm hungry. Because you ask me constantly, are you ready to eat yet? Nope, not yet. Mm-hmm. What do you want? I, I don't hear that either. Unless it's dinner time and you've picked the other rest of the meals for the day. And I'm like, let's get Taco Bell or something. Right. But for the most part, I don't have a say in our food. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to eat whatever the fuck you put in front of me, even if I don't like it, because you took the time to make the shit. Right. How, how do you have that relationship where you are a provider 
and still have to like, oh, I don't know. I, I couldn't live like that. I just couldn't do it. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't live like that. There would be a real quick fucking conversation. Like if I'm working until nine o'clock when I get home, dinner needs to be on the table. Yeah. And if dinner's not going to be on the table and you can't figure out dinner or DoorDash or whatever to make that work and I have to go to bed hungry or I got to stay up until fucking 10 o'clock to cook and 11 o'clock to clean and I have to get up at six o'clock in the morning to do it all over again. If I have to live alone, I'm going to be alone. Right. I can see our de- our numbers decreasing right now oh. in my head. Well, I agree <laughs> with everything him. you said. Yep. I agree with everything you said on the flip coin. If I'm a working mom, say I'm a nurse and I work the later shift. I'm not getting home until 11 o'clock at night and my husband gets home at 6 p.m. He should cook. I would expect that food would be ready, even if it's in the microwave and I still have to heat it up. Yep. Like I would expect that food is already taken care of. You should be taking know. care of your person. There's nothing right. wrong with that. I don't get it. I'm glad you said that because the amount of people who are, I'm sure that what I said is going to get clipped and the amount of people who's not going to watch the full length content are going to be like, well, what about those who work? And I'll be like, well, you should watch the podcast because that was addressed right afterwards. I had your shake ready for you before you even left the gym. I didn't even know you were fucking home. Yeah. You walked in the gym right as we finished and was like, here you go. I'm like, (laughs) where did you come from? Yeah. They started working out earlier today. And typically we start at nine after I drop the kids off at school and we work out and then go to work and do our thing. And today it happened earlier because our workout partner has something going on. So I missed working out and it was perfect opportunity for me to love you. Yeah. So why wouldn't I take that? I knew you would have the shake anyway. Yep. There's, um, a love in that. Yeah. I don't even know how else to word that, that, um, that my husband's got me shit that you say all the time. There is something primal in me and having you make sure that my base needs in life are met because I'm doing the same for you, right? Like I may not cook or clean, but I make sure that you have everything else that you need. And financially you want, you want for nothing. Right. And like, if you want to go get your nails done or you want to go get your toes done or whatever, you just go do that. Right. Like, cause we've been able to make that work and it's not a matter of no, If you want a new purse, it's not a matter of no. It might be a week because purses can get fucking stupid expensive. Mm -hmm. But I'm able to provide for you in a different way that meets the needs that you have. And your love language being act of service and mine being gift giving, that works real well for us. Oh, yeah, it does. (laughs) Because I I enjoy showering you with shit. Yeah. Like, today is the sixth. Right. Valentine's Day is coming around the corner. Oh, are are we doing something for Valentine's Day? I always do something. I've done something every Valentine's Day that we've had. It might not be on Valentine's Day, but I'm I'm waiting on something to come in the mail. Okay. I don't expect nothing from you. I don't want anything from you because Valentine's Day is a woman's holiday. (laughs) Is it? (laughs) I think it is. Yeah. I I think it is. I know that like there's the meme of men don't get flowers until their funeral. I don't want flowers. Mm -hmm. Buy me a fucking ratchet set, right? Like get me something that I can use that is, the you know, come on, let's be real. I don't want flowers. I want something that's that's for your funeral. No, I meant for oh. like no. I, no that wouldn't do know. me a good. I'd be say, fucking I'll just dead. Put like a booty picture in your coffin. That, I mean that works because I'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so yeah, I think I think Valentine's Day is a woman woman's holiday. It's a way for corporations to get us to spend more money. It's monetized love. Yeah. It, it, it that's what it is. So. Um, but this the shit that I what I got is. I get you four or five times a year anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Is it chocolate? It is. It's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Did they say chocolate? <laughs> yep. Christopher Elbow's chocolate. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> but I ordered it two weeks ago. So that I could make sure that it was here before Valentine's Day. I love that you did that. I love that's a thing for us. Right. Well, I don't have to worry about my food. Right. You know what I mean? So like or your unders. And I'll rub your feet. And I like shaving your head. That's I love that. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna start crying. That okay. So let's talk about that though, okay. because there's a level of intimacy to that too. And there are people out there who are listening to this podcast right now who goes, she shaves, shaves him. Yeah. Cooks for him. Does his laundry. What is it? Is his mother? No, no it's my I'm wife. His wife. Right. She's doing things that are intimate for us. You shaving my head is an intimate moment. You, you shave my head. You lotion my head and kiss my head. I do. Every fucking time my head gets shaved. Yep. We have a routine. I don't even have to say anything. I, I walk out there with the clippers and move the table and sit on the floor and you just do the thing. Yep. 
lotion kiss. Yeah. I even take extra time and I just like caress your head. And right. I don't know. I, I It's crazy to me that people want to devalue those intimate moments between people. Right. Just because they want to put a negative overtone mm-hmm. to it. Shave my own head. I can yeah, do my own laundry and I can cook own my own head. meals. It's not going to kill me to have to do those things, but... It's how I love you. Yeah. Yeah. The other morning you made yourself a shake and I was like, you took away an opportunity to love, mm-hmm. like for me to love you. I was like, why would you do that to me? <laughs> yeah. It was a thing. Yeah. It actually became a conversation. I can't buy you things. You buy everything you want. Right. Well, I, I wouldn't want you to buy me things. Right. And Cause in, let, let's say, cause a second ago I was like for Valentine's day, buy me a socket set. Right. I have four of them out there. Yeah. I like when I think of expressing love to you i never think about buying you anything right because i don't i don't need anything right i could suggest to buy something like hey babe i know you've been thinking about that four-wheeler permission for you to spend money i guess is an act of love (laughs) yeah i mean that works you know how many people want to do shit and can't because their woman won't let them that's insane to me won't let them that's that's absolutely crazy because when you come to me about something it's like hey babe you want to do this with me it's never a hey babe can i do this right it's an invitation to have an experience together. It's not a, it's a request, am I allowed to do this? It's a request for connection. Yeah. Because you're not my mother. Right. I'm your wife. And I'm going to do the things that I want to do anyways, because I'm, re- I'm responsible for the finances. Yeah. And I've not put us in a position to not be able to pay the mortgage mm-hmm. or our fucking Roth payments. You know what I mean? So like I've, I've shown you that I'm capable of making sure that every facet of our life is taken care of. You don't tell me no, because obviously yeah. I wouldn't be trying to spend the money if we didn't fucking have it in the bank or on a credit card. Right. I don't, that, that would be my question. I'd be like, is it cash or card? What are we, right. what are we doing? <laughs> but I don't do things for me. Right. It's for the unit. It's, it's, it's us. All of it. Yeah. Everything that I have ever spent big amounts of money on has been for our family to do shit. The bikes, the four wheelers. Right. All of it. The van. The camera equipment. Yeah. It's never a me thing. It's an us thing. How can I make this so that we have something new that we can do together to experience life and enjoy mm-hmm. our time? Because time is finite. It's going to run out. We are going to hit an expiration date at some point. Right. I may not have a million dollars, but I have a million dollars worth of fun. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I want my, my deathbed experience to be one of gratitude instead of sorrow and regret. Right. I want to go off into a, a tirade about consciousness and, the probability of you being alive, like not just being alive and having life, but in this moment of time, in space, in the universe. Mm -hmm. It's like one in 400 trillion. And like when you think of consciousness and not being conscious, like you know what sleeping's like, but you go to bed thinking you're going to wake up in the morning. Right. You don't remember what it was like, even your first year of life. Like you don't remember coming into the world and seeing light for the first time and hearing sounds that aren't muffled by like amniotic fluid. None of that is remembered. Nobody can describe what death is like. So to truly understand what it means to be alive can really only be understood once death is experienced. I want my life to mean something. Me too. I want to be remembered for for being something. Right. Well, and we will be. Right. I mean, everybody's going to be remembered for being something. Right. No, this, the last year of our life, even if we quit this today, yeah, the last year of our life, we will be that couple who had the To Be Better podcast. This is going, this is, this will be our legacy. Yeah. Even if this fails Mm -hmm. and there's crazy, like whatever. Right. We were still the people that had the To Be Better podcast that helped people. Those people will, will remember us forever. They're going to tell their kids about us. They, they might. And we, we, we remember for a generation and our YouTube videos will still be there. But yeah. um, I, I don't want to be the guy that, that wastes my existence here. Right. Can we get back into the email? Because I'm going to get emotional and I don't want to do that. Okay. Back into the email. It's frustrating for me. I want to spend quality time with her while doing the things I love. But she has no desire to learn the fundamentals of anything. And expects me to drop what I'm doing to teach her. So wait, she either doesn't have the desire to understand the fundamentals or she wants you to teach her? Wouldn't that mean that she wants to understand the fundamentals and she's asking you to do it and you are denying that? Right. I would agree with that statement. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. 
She doesn't want just anyone to teach her these things. She wants you to teach her these her things. Her husband. Lead. Lead, motherfucker. Lead. I want that on a shirt. Lead, motherfucker. Lead. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Peaches, preaches, and lead, motherfucker, lead. Next shirt drop, guys. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. The Peaches Preaches shirt is something that a lot of people want. Yeah. Mm. Or what would Peaches do? We would have to put an image on the shirt. It can't just be the words. A peach with glasses and a chain. That's it. Finishing the email. And even if I did, meaning, oh, I lied. Backing up a sentence. I know I don't have the patience to teach her. And if I did, I doubt she would listen to me. So my question is, what do I do? I'm not forcing her into these. I'm not even asking her to get into it with me. I just want to spend time with her. Sure, I want her to get into some of these hobbies. But I want her to take the initiative of learning things on her own. Find a coach, a teacher, take a class, and then we can do it together. With much love, a jack of all trades. And a master of none. Correct. I, I don't understand where the issue in this is, dude. How do you not see what's happening? I would say there's a selfishness there. I'm going to I'm gonna lean back onto the superiority complex vibes that I was getting because to teach someone is to almost view them in a childlike manner, right? Because we teach children how to be human beings. And if somebody is learning something for the first time, they are going to fumble and fall like a child. So is her not taking the initiative, making her less of a, an adult in your view. Me asking the emailer, because that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting. You even told her, like, go find the instructors while I go do the big boy stuff. This is your wife. Like, I, w I would even do that for our children. I would take two days out of a vacation to teach them how to snowboard so we can spend the last three all doing it together. There's really a selfishness in that. Yeah. I'm going to hit you with something different. Okay. Everyone on the planet has seen at least one Hallmark movie. And in every one of those movies that come on around Christmas time where the people move away and come back and reconnect mm -hmm. and they're ice skating together and someone falls and there's lots of laughter and that love reconnect happens in that moment. Right. Yeah. With the Christmas tree in the background. Yeah. And yeah. What it's do you nighttime. What do you think is, is happening right now from this woman? Yeah. She's trying to get that Hallmark moment. She Give wants, her her Hallmark. <laughs> right. Women want that. Those yeah. movies are super fucking successful because women crave that because they don't have a man who's willing to do those things unless they're in the courting phase when they're in lust. Mm -hmm. You should always be pursuing, always be dating, always looking for those moments to reconnect. Send it, babe. Oh, I'm going to fucking send it. We mm -hmm. hit that puddle and we're completely drenched and laughing our ass off, right? Yep. Or you fall off your dirt bike and I get to help you or I get to talk you through a, a like serious mountain like issue on the bike, thing, yeah. right? Like those moments are going to be moments that we got to share together and I got to lead and I got yeah. to help and I got to reconnect with you and I got to be your knight in shining armor, right? Mm -hmm. That's what this is. A hundred percent. How yeah. do you not see that? It, is, is it that you want to do all the things that you want to do without having to regress and slow down to, to just, why not, why not take an extra day? Right. Go to the gym on your not training day mm -hmm. and train your wife. All right, babe, today's chest day. I did chest on Tuesday. It's Sunday. Let's go. We're going to do this now. I'm going to walk you through it. You're going to do everything real light because on mm -hmm. Tuesday we're doing chest again and I want you to know how to do this shit. Where's that? Mm -hmm. Where, where's the, the falling down at the skating rink laughing moment? Right? Trying to pick you up and I eat shit. It, which has happened. <laughs> the rate of, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I love you. I love you too. Mm -hmm. That, but that's isn't that doesn't that feel like a Hallmark movie? It does. To you? Uh, our whole life feels like a Hallmark movie to me. The top of the lighthouse, walking the Las Vegas Strip, cuddled up in front of a fireplace, taking pictures in the desert of hieroglyphs. Oh my god! Or petroglyphs. Yeah, petroglyphs. petroglyphs. Yeah. I don't. Um, Approaching you with a pocket full of sand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Don't be mad. <laughs> Why would I be mad? You forgot your bag, didn't you? Yep, I did. And I got sand in my pocket. I was like, I kind of figured that. Yep. I, I don't understand. I, I just don't. I don't get it. You're supposed to be a team. You're supposed to want to do these things with your person. Mm -hmm. Let's let's take it to an extreme. Okay. 
What happens in an end of the world event? Would you leave your woman behind? I wouldn't. I'd hope not. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I'd be so fucked without you. But I wouldn't do that. Right. I know. I, I don't. I don't know. I have a skill set. And is it harder to take care of another person? Yes. Absolutely. But I would rather die six months into an end of the world event than leave you behind and regret that decision for the rest of my existence. I watched a video this morning of people being pranked and it was like scare pranks where um, like one was a saw situation where a dude walked into a bathroom and saw somebody strapped down and jigsaw rode by and a okay. dude ran out of the fucking stall with a pipe yeah. and smacked it. Dude jumped and ran and left the guy in there. <laughs> and the very next video was a guy and a woman walking through a parking lot and three clowns get out of a car and he runs and jumps over a wall and fucking leaves her behind. I had to grab my weapon. Yeah. I, I can't fight three dudes. I'm going to shoot all three of you motherfuckers though. Or you're going to get back in your van. And you're going to drive. Yeah. Cause at that point I'm afraid for my life and I have a woman to protect. I'm drawing my, my weapon. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck if that's illegal or not. I'm going to draw it. Yeah. I, I would rather be alive mm -hmm. than fucking. I don't know what those clowns intentions are jumping at us. Right. Well, somebody jumps out wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. I, I don't think that's a prank. Right. I think you intend to do me harm and you got your face covered. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people doing those pranks really don't know what street life is like. Right. Well, they also it also depends on what state you're in. True. Because you can do that shit in California and New York and get away with it because a lot of people ain't carrying there. You ain't doing that shit in Florida. Mm -mm. The gunshine state. Yeah. The home of fuck around and find out. The good old boys here don't play that shit. You might get away with it in certain areas. Yeah. Orlando. You ain't doing that shit in Arcadia. Yeah. And a good old boy's wife don't play either, especially no. we got children around. Yep. Yep. I don't get it. I don't get it. Dude just fucking ran and left his woman there. He did. But And I only brought that up because of the end of the world scenario. Right. I, I just don't. That's how I view that. If you're not willing to really protect, provide, and lead, why marry? Why not just go live your life? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and you don't have hobbies in common. Right. You said that in the beginning of the email. What are you getting out of being married? She won't cook for you. You don't have things in common. She frustrates you. Why be married? What are you truly benefiting from in that marriage? I was going to say unlimited. <laughs> that might even be on retract. Well, yeah. But even that, if, if he's a, a somewhat attractive man, mm -hmm. that don't matter. <laughs> he's a flooded commodity. It is. 20 years ago, it may not have been. Mm hmm but it's everywhere now. Oh, yeah. On everything. Yep. Sex scenes make me so uncomfortable now. Yeah. I, I we get to the point where we fast forward through a lot of that shit. You know what I thought about the other day? You, you mentioned in the um, the Karen feeding part three that I edited, you had said something about women marketing marketing themselves on the Internet. Right. You worded it. I don't remember how you worded it, but that was that's what I took from it. Mm -hmm. And all I could think of is the effectiveness of social media marketing. Oh, yeah. And I was going to like wait until that came out and make that small clip and put it on the TikTok and like stitch it or screen screen it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because in business, my most effective marketing is social media marketing. It is. So to be with a woman who's advertising herself on social media, posting thirst traps and doing that, I don't think you guys understand the level of marketing that that actually truly is and what it can do for people. Mm -hmm. You know, it, in the first six months of this podcast, before people realized that there's no way in hell there would ever be an OnlyFans, we were asked for that shit oh, a yeah. lot. Take advantage of all of you. And that's exactly what that would be. Mm -hmm. But we were asked for that shit we over were. and over and over again for months. Yeah. Um, which blows my fucking mind. Like, I don't know. I don't get and it. A, it. We are in a time once again where sex is the forefront of things because we have become so comfortable in life it's hollow it's so hollow it's shallow like i've really been on like the last few days a kick of like i really don't care that people find me pretty or attractive or like on my tiktok lives i see all the time oh my god look at her jugs yeah you're covered yeah how is that even a thing me in dresses or something. Yeah. It, it's constant. Oh my God. But now even I view like a compliment of you're so attractive of you are really just seeing my vessel. Like this is a, this is a shell. This can be destroyed at any moment. 
It's a depreciating asset. It is a depreciating asset. This is really a visual time clock. And when I'm on TikTok lives answering questions about cheating or, you know, I feel he doesn't love me anymore. And I'm actually giving advice and information on what I would do in that moment. And you're still just vo- focused on my appearance. Like it really just makes me feel like an object. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's TikTok. The, you know, people who who watch thirst traps or, or watch attractive women all the time, you're going to th- show up in their FYP, mm. especially when you're live, because it's going to push it out as an attractive woman, yeah. which is probably why you get that. It's also why you got the guys who, who will come in and be like, what are you doing today? Well, this is what I'm doing today. Well, this is boring mm-hmm. because you're not fucking bouncing your titties or shaking your ass on TikTok right. or crying, trying to get people to give you donations. I don't know. TikTok's a cesspool. It's a cesspool. We, oh. um, you, you know, we made that comment the other day when I asked the question and we talked about how lonely people are and how uh, we're all attention starved and we want to be loved. Yeah. I couldn't imagine being that person who is fucking a different person all the time and still feeling that loneliness because it is a superficial fulfillment. It's not genuine. It's not real. There's no connection there. Right. It's literally just friction. Yep. It's friction. That's all that's happening. There's a buildup and there's a energetic release, but we are we are creatures that crave acceptance and love and affection, acceptance, and appreciation. Three things all human beings crave. Yeah. None of that is satiated in sex. It should be though. Well, if sex is just sex and you're sleeping with somebody different every single night. Right. And then, of course, it's not. Right. But what, what it should be, what it was intended to be, is the overfill of all of those things leading to that. Right? Okay. Elaborate for me. Um, well, you said, what were they? Acceptance? Acceptance, appreciation, and affection. Right. So in, the, in, in an abundance of that, mm-hmm. and you have that with your person, and you have sex, that sex has so much more meaning to it. Right. Because those mm-hmm. three things are so fulfilled that it's overflowing into an asexual activity. Mm-hmm. When you don't have that and you're just fucking somebody and it's hollow, there is none of that there. So in that situation, sex is not going to do those three things. Right. But it's supposed mm-hmm. to. It's supposed to be the highest form of affection that two people can have. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. The society is going to do what society does. And, you know, I, I can't judge everyone on the planet that's not my job right i i disagree with with the way things are because i've experienced both sides of that coin Mm -hmm. and i'm more fulfilled now than i've ever been in my entire life and and everything has more meaning us sitting on the couch and me holding your foot has more meaning than than physical touch has ever had yeah because there's a lot more behind it than just the act of doing something and it's not just routine it's not like there's a conscious like when i lay on your chest at night you can cry again. I can't stop it. It's happening. When I lay on your chest at night, I tell you almost every single day, I can't wait to lay with you. I have to take a pause because if I don't, my voice gets really breaky and it sounds like I'm crying. So I have to like breathe it. <laughs> but like I texted my friend earlier that I read, you could be sleeping on this, the couch every single night for the last six months. It's so hard to me to fall asleep when I'm not listening to your heartbeat. Yeah. Those those moments mean more now than they ever did before because of what we have. Yeah. I um I don't take any of that for granted. And I think that's why we work so hard to keep the things that we have. And right. it's not just those moments, it's all of them. It's learning how to dirt bike together. Yeah. It's riding down that dirt road and finding that one little bridge where we get to sit sit, sit down and like, oh, there's an alligator right there. Look at that bird. We should stick a to be better sticker on that that box. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like those moments mean something. It's Be- taking the kids somewhere for the first time on their dirt bikes. Right. Yep. Life, life, your, your life is just going to be one series of good memories or bad memories. And it's right. going to be what you pay attention to. And, you know, I don't want to take any of this for granted. I want to, I want it to be, I want my life to have meaning. Yeah. What time was you? I thought your appointment was at noon. It's at 1230. Okay, well, it's 1222. You want to wrap this up? The last thing that I want to say is that our daughter draws us hugging every time she draws us. That's wild, isn't it? Because that's the life that she sees. Yeah. When we did the interview where um, the politocrats, 
Scott and Wakenya actually interviewed us, which is live on our Patreon. Uh, it will be live eventually, but we put that on Patreon first. Yeah. Uh, the entire interview, you are sitting sideways on the couch and I'm holding your foot the whole fucking interview. Yeah. Um, that's, that's our normal position on the couch. Mm -hmm. We do that so much that it didn't feel right with you sitting next to me on a couch without your foot there. So you put it there and I held it the whole fucking interview. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's funny because in watching that, I'm watching me touch your foot the whole time. That's all I could focus on was the fact that I was holding your foot the whole time. Yeah. Um, it was my, I was wearing heels that he really enjoys too. Yeah. 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 So for those of you who are not subscribed to our Patreon channel, you're actually missing out. I think we dropped six pieces of content last week. Oh, good for them. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a lot because we yeah. have so much going on right now that there's bonus content and early release stuff. And like, what do you guys think about this? And can we have your opinion here? And, and there was a lot of that. Now, granted, we don't always do that. There's always one to two episodes that drop every week, regardless, because of your, your, your garden episode. And then we do the live streams and we do Zoom calls. Last mm -hmm. week's Zoom call was fucking incredible. That drops oh, tomorrow, so which will good. be the 7th. So for you guys who are watching this in March, when it releases, go back and look for the episode that dropped on February 7th. It's a live replay of our Zoom call that we did. That Zoom call was fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, getting couples to work with us, like a coaching experience is, is I think the next evolution for us. I agree a hundred percent. And it was so dope because neither of them took anything personally. No. I agree. I think the next evolution is definitely doing couples zoom calls or seminars. I want to, I want to get to the point where we can have couples sit down on our podcast. Mm -hmm. And if that means we need another studio where we can sit down and do that in person, that would be great. But if we can schedule trips, like, cause we're going to Arizona by the time this drops, we'll be planning a trip for like a week after this to Arizona. And while we're in Arizona, if we could sit down with a couple, rent a, a room somewhere like a conference room at a hotel that we're staying at and be able to get them to sit down with us. And That's is that the call. call? All right. Well, with that being said, guys, we got to go. You are the author of your own life. So grab a pen and we'll see you on the next one. Bye guys. Trying to hurry that up. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>